This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at new Warhammer 40,000 boomer shooter, Bolt Gun. This is probably a rabbit hole I can ill afford to go down. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comment section below. And make sure to check out our other Warhammer related video where we have an armor expert break down the arms and armor of Warhammer. Right, let's take a look at the grim dark weapons of Bolt Gun. Heretics to purge! Ready your weapon! So still just looking at the overview of this, of the classic bolter here. I'm always going to be struck by the fact there's no buttstock on it. The winged skull, the symbolism, the gold and the red, uh, it's, it's a sort of you know, imperial slash religious overtones to a weapon that I'm hard pressed to think of a, a real world parallel to at the moment. We have sort of gilding and even velvet on royal firearms going way back to Henry VIII. So that's not so unusual. I've seen skulls on, on guns. Uh, there's a set of dueling pistols that our, our, our former gun maker here at the Armouries had in once that had skulls on, on the breeches that I was very, in gold that I was very taken with. Ammunition wise, we get a nice shot of the round in the magazine as it goes in and then we see them sitting on the table and they are closest parallel is the 40 millimeter grenade round that we have today but apparently and we'll see how much this is significant in the game it's a rocket bullet still in a case so there's still a case that is ejected but then we have um those of you who've been following us for a while might remember this chunk of wood that's uh how far a gyro jet bullet penetrated into a piece of uh pine but uh, it's suffice to say, if it can go that far into wood at any distance, it's not going to do you any favours. We've shown, I've shown the gyrojet pistol on the on the series before, so I thought, what can I do better than that? Two gyrojet pistols <laughs> is the best I can do for you. Uh, we have a Mark One, and we have a Mark Two C, Mark Twelve Millimeter gyrojet. So this was a design by MBA or MB Associates. And it's essentially a sheet metal, almost like a toy gun is how it feels, with a, a steel barrel mounted within it that is really more of a launch rail for these miniature rockets. And there is no case, they are caseless rocket projectiles. And they're little exhaust vents in the back of them there. So how the, how the bolter rounds really work, I don't know, but there is a significant difference there in that they are still cased for whatever reason. It's not clear to me why they would still need to be cased, except that it looks damn cool when cases go spilling out of the big handheld grenade launcher, which to me is still what this thing feels like. Something we never would have seen in back in the day with the original era of shooters that this is harking back to is the ability to fit different size magazines. Um, you had what you had. It's kind of cool to see a machine gun-esque, LMG-esque, or some sort of big box magazine attached here to give you more capacity. You get 10 rounds extra in these big chunky magazines, which is probably about right actually, given how massive the rounds are. It's more about the effect that they're having. So we've got purple colored vengeance rounds here. Kind of intriguing that we've got some aspects of modern gaming projected backwards into this era of graphics, but yeah. So the shotgun and bolt gun is for the Warhammer nerds among us, interesting because it's a very specific shotgun. It's the Death Watch shotgun, which okay. is used by Death Watch Space Marines who are focused in like ah. going into alien infested asteroids and space hulks. And it's also, I think, the only shotgun that's going to really suit the scale of a Space Marine as well. In game, it's less strong than the Volta. Like you see a strength rating in the bottom right, um, but but against the unarmored oh, yeah. enemies and the the mobs, it's very effective. Right, next up, we've got what I think is evident from the design language and the ammunition and the way we've got the same trails for the for the shots and everything, that this is a giant pump action shotgun that <laughs> is suitably proportioned and sized for giant dudes in uh, power armor. I normally at this point would complain about the pump grip on a 
far future, very far future in this case, weapon. I think the, the rule of cool is sufficiently powerful in this context that um, even I am obliged to not care about that. And um, yeah, it, it works, it does the job, fills the niche, is, is clearly destructive. There's clearly something going on in terms of what I'm struck by in the, the shots of Buckshot, or can we call it Buckshot, um, going down range is that there are these trails and when they strike something, there's this sort of heat impression of a, of a hot impact, um, just like the bolt gun rounds. So I gather that these would be effectively bolter shot shells. Uh, each, each, each pellet effectively, presumably, is some sort of rocket propelled round. So it gives it a, a visual distinctiveness on firing. It appears to do less damage to armored enemies, which you'd expect. Although in a way, there's no reason why that would necessarily be the case with far future technology. You could create a spread effect with rounds that are just as penetrative as rifle rounds. But of course, if you do that, you are making essentially one gun to rule them all, and you needn't have multiple weapons, and you need multiple weapons in an FPS. On the face of it, it's fitting the, the shotgun niche, it's got the reduced rate of fire, but significant damage, and the power-ups are interesting. In a, in a 90s style, we are effectively powering up the weapon for a period of time. We are not upgrading it and unlocking abilities like a modern game, right? so I like that. I'm also seeing things flash up on screen like plus two contempt. So there is, there are clearly some role playing uh, or tabletop um, aspects coming into this that I am probably completely unaware of, and some that I'm seeing but not really understanding the context of. And that's that's great. That's probably you know Easter eggs for for Warhammer players, and you know if the rest of us can can uh, look them up and, and get into the the wider universe or not but um yeah it's looking really good gratuitous the contempt thing is is gives. a reference to a to a a line in a book somewhere but basically space marines will often say my armor is contempt like my armor is hatred so you just oh. get an angrier and more hateful as you go on oh i see you shrug off damage <laughs> oh there you go oh so yeah not so much a mechanic as a yeah, more of an Easter egg, really. As a inveterate Doom player, I can't help but see this plasma gun and think plasma gun off of doom but um i'm very aware that that's not the only place these things exist major difference here would seem to be well a couple of differences i suppose one is area effect so in that respect it's a bit more like a bfg but but not fully so it's sort of splash damage which sort of intuitively makes sense to me plasma hot splashy um i'm sure, I'm sure that's not how it works in physics terms we have the the heat rate of fire thing that we've seen in other games where it's getting well some not always tied together but it's increasing its rate of fire the more you fire it but it's it's well what usually happens is it damages the gun or it reaches a point and you're shown to hurt yourself but you don't take damage necessarily and then it's a wait for it to reset this actually does seem to damage you when it gets too hot uh, i'm not sure how that works with armor clad hands if it's if it's hot enough to damage you through the armor then the armor would be trash surely but hey I'm, i shouldn't be looking for realism in this grim dark future that we are observing. Um, as ever, it's a little hard to comment on mechanics and things of energy weapons. Suffice to say, there's a, a power pack and lots of light and uh, some particle effects going down range, but it's visibly different. And I suppose the, the good thing for the game at least is this is a universe where energy weapons have a niche, but they're not sort of predominant, I think it's fair to say. So they might burn through armor or something, but they may be less effective in other ways and maybe dangerous as well. I think it's quite a nice way to treat energy weapons so that you can still have your Blade Runner slash Aliens projectile slug throwers, if you're a Star Wars fan but also your energy weapons. And uh, that's, I guess that's kind of where we've bottomed out with um, sci-fi these days is it doesn't have to be just uh, gritty slug throwers or Flash Gordon ray guns. You can have both depending on what you want.
Right, another bolt gun. I think, by my count, that's three bolt guns in this bolt gun game. That's good. <laughs> and it's a heavy bolter, which I have heard of. And my impression is that this is like a, a belt-fed LMG equivalent of an ordinary bolter. It being belt-fed isn't really apparent. I suppose you can sort of, you get a hint of a feed mechanism that's more machine gun-like on the left side next to a skull, because of course there's a skull. It's big, it's chunky. Um, we have a, an overhand grip, which does sort of reference how you hold a light machine gun where you would grasp the, the buttstock and pull it into the shoulder instead of supporting the weapon at the front because you have a bipod. Um, this doesn't have a bipod, but nonetheless, somehow the hold of it does, does imply something heavier and chunkier and more powerful. Uh, muzzle flash is also increased. Report sounds uh, oddly muted. I don't know if there's a sort of in-universe reason for that, but um, it's, it's not so muted that it doesn't come across as a big heavy gun. So thinking about, uh, I can't help but think about how this would work if it was real. It's, it's, a, it's an affliction, what can I say? is just because it has what appears to be a primer on the cartridge head does not mean that this isn't electrically fired. It's perfectly possible that this is electrically initiated. There are, going right back to the 1890s, there were electrically fired primers. But for example, the, there's a one inch aiming rifle that is like a sub caliber spotting or training actually weapon for massive coastal artillery pieces so you're firing a, a one inch caliber round they look not unlike bolter rounds that's electrically fired so a very early form of electrical ignition so just because there's a round primer in the base doesn't mean it's designed to be pierced which means i don't have to nitpick the fact that there aren't struck primers on the cases Okay, pause there. Now, I've heard of a melter gun. They're mostly used as like anti-armor, anti-tank. And uh, okay. I don't believe it, I don't know if the laws change, but from memory, they either work by shooting by shooting a, a cone of like fusion energy or focusing like microwaves to agitate the, the, the atoms basically. Uh. But in layman's, big hot thing, punch hot hole through other thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to know. I think you should use that, that clip in, in a video. Okay, another very cool looking weapon. Um, what, a type I've heard of, a melter gun. I, I don't know much about them, but I've heard of them. And uh, something to do with heat is going on here. This could be a complete red herring, guys, but um, the, if you've heard of a shaped charge, this is, this is a phenomenon whereby a high explosive charge shaped into a, into a hollow was found to be able to punch through armor way more effectively than just a block of explosives. Um, it's the principle behind, among other things, the RPG-7 warhead. Recoilless guns use it as well. And it is, there's a lot of heat involved, but it is not using heat to punch through the armor, despite the acronym High Explosive Anti-Tank. Now, this is clearly an anti-armor weapon. It's, it's making short work of these Chaos Space Marines here. This weapon uses heat. The high explosive anti-tank weapon or warhead does not. It actually converts a piece of metal into a hypervelocity jet of particles that punch their way through the molecules of the steel. That's my museum curator's level understanding of it. I don't know if that's of any use at all here. This is a future um, science fiction technology, but we do we, we definitely get the feel of this thing that it is punching or trying to punch through solid metal. I don't know, I, th I think I probably thought a melter gun was some sort of flame incinerator type fuel air explosive weapon. I hadn't appreciated that it was effectively uh, an anti-armor gun. If I remember my codex entries, I think one of them lists it as creates a beam of energy in the like, tens of thousands of degrees centigrade. Okay. It's the point where people nearby having to like squint and blink away flashes of heat and light from it. It's uh, always very intense when it appears in books and lore. Right. Well, I think they, they seem to have captured it pretty well here in that game. There's a guy named Jürgen in um, the Kyphus Kane books, which is basically as close to Blackadder as you can get in 40k. <laughs> so I, rec I really recommend them. Okay. And he's on more than one occasion just like blown a demon in half with this thing. This is probably a rabbit hole I can ill afford to go down. 
<laughs> oh yeah. I have high hopes for Mr. Cavill and friends though. All right. Um, it's a rotary grenade, grenade launcher. It breaks open much like the Milcor MGL. Um, we've shown an early version of that from the collection before. So I've branched out slightly. Um, this is something I need to do some research on. One of a number of less lethal launchers. This is not actually intended to be, unlike the Milcor, a lethal purpose grenade launcher, but it does have the rotary function. It doesn't break open. It has a loading gate, not a million miles away. Um, if anything, it's longer proportionately than the one in the game. The one in the game is, again, Space Marine sized. It's clearly immense. Uh, I don't think a normal human could pick that up. Um, no buttstock. Um, this definitively has a very big buttstock. Recommended um, for a riot gun like this or for a grenade launcher. It's really not a good idea. The recoil of um, modern grenades, 40mm type grenades, is not huge by any means, but um, if you want to aim, if you want to hit what you're aiming at, even if it's an area effect, you do want a buttstock. So the Milkor typically has a folding or a telescoping buttstock, depending on the variant. So what is this thing? Well, I don't quite know yet. It's something from the collection that uh, my predecessors would be aware of. I need to go and look it up. But it's called the Excalibur. So it struck me as being vaguely Warhammer reminiscent with such a sort of mythological name. That's my excuse anyway. So I'll be looking into this. Um, those of you who follow the Royal Armouries channel, please forget about it because I'll probably feature it in the future. Details wise, a couple of pipes on the side there, don't know what they're doing, but this appears, it's not, not clear how this is revolved, if it was a real thing, which obviously it isn't. Reloading is a gigantic revolver speed loader, which is quite funny. And to think that uh, our Space Marine hero has somewhere behind him a great big pile, or maybe an assistant with a cart filled with <laughs> grenade speed loaders. Who cares? Not only is it an FPS, it's a it's a Warhammer FPS as well. So not going to worry about that. But just in case we're concerned that there aren't enough skulls on our weapons, there is also one on this too. Going down another nerdy rabbit hole, this thing is yep. called a Volkai Caliber. They're immensely powerful. Okay. But bolt guns eventually replaced them after the Horus Heresy. This weapon's probably 10,000 years old in the timeline of this game. Yeah, Caliber being a, a name that's sort of associated with very old firearms stuck out as well. Mm. So is it the idea that bolt guns are actually a throwback compared to this thing? Bolt guns were, I believe, built out of necessity. Like all the forge planets that could make this sort of thing were lost or destroyed. Whereas right. bolt guns, by by comparison, were easier to make and figure out than this yeah. intense laser technology. That After the dark sense. age of technology, they just forgot how to make them, so they're yeah. legendary weapons now. Now this is this is something entirely new to me. Um, the phrase that comes to mind is grim dark phaser. <laughs> Being being something of a, of a Trek fan, this is like someone's unbolted a shipborne phaser and is toting it around. This is the, the the beam size and strength and effect, and it, it just it feels more industrial. But it is a beam weapon, um, changing up the gameplay quite as, as far as you can with an FPS, really. I've just realized that not only the, the power-ups are 3D, but the weapon models are also 3D until you pick them up. So this thing's called the Grav Cannon. It's the last weapon you get in the game, the most powerful, a, a weird one even in Warhammer, but broadly, it turns gravity up. So if you're hit by this beam, it turns that person's gravity up, its mass against them and just basically swish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of, I saw the name and I saw the weapon being picked up. I thought perhaps it was going to be um, like the, the Half-Life gravity gun or in some way manipulating gravity. I think it's supposed to be. Well, ultimately it looks like it's creating a black hole out of green space energy. And that is just pulping the enemy. So the end result is the same as getting destroyed by basically any weapon in the game. There, there's not a specific type of damage that it's causing, I don't think. 
say, you know, no, people aren't being spaghettified. That's a real thing. Look it up. Um, actually, if you've seen um, certain recent Marvel offerings, you might have seen a version of that. Um, but that's you know, what happens if you get too close to the event horizon of a black hole. That's, that's a bit sort of hand wave, but it, it's like a BFG 9000, but a beam weapon. And it's it's yeah pulping you with a, with a black hole. It looks it looks pretty cool. I can't say too much about it because it's so far removed from from what I know. But um, as uh, what what appears to be the ultimate weapon in the game, um, probably can't do much better than that. Those were the guns of Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, uh, which I've had my eye on for a while myself, and uh, I'm looking forward to giving that a go. So it's nice to get an extended preview of all the weapons from the game. Looking forward to that. Um, if you'd like to see a bit of what we do at the Royal Armouries, we have our own YouTube channel. We also have social media outlets and a website and three actual museums that you can visit if you're in the UK at any point. I hope you do. Um, thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.